move. Coke, my Coke got shaken up a little bit. <laughs> We're good now. Yeah, um, man, it was crazy. Uh, such a um, powerful team, powerful car. Uh, I was able to get everything working really well today. Um, you know, it just feels so good to be back in victory lane. Um, but. You know, I think all the Fords uh, had very fast um, cars. You know, saw qualifying and the way the stages worked. It showed that we were uh, working together as a team really well. Um, so I was proud to be a part of that. Um, you know, and there at the end, you know, you work together as much as you can. And then, uh, you know, uh, you just want to make sure a Ford wins. And you, you hope it's you, but you try to do the right thing as well. And, um, you know, I had uh, some Stuart Haas cars behind, there, behind me, which, uh, you know, aren't necessarily teammates, but, with the Ford uh, performance relationship, uh, you know, it's the closest thing that I'm ever going to have to it. So uh, I was uh, thankful to have them behind me. Um, you know, I, I was wondering what kind of what kind of fight they were going to put on there at the end. They're working together, but uh, they got split up, and that kind of changed the the complexion of the race when it came down to the end there, the last uh, few corners. So uh, it was all about just making the right blocks, keeping them uh, close, uh, so I didn't pull away too far and they get a big run. Um, I mean, just staring in the mirror pretty much the whole time. So, uh, great, uh, great job by a team. Our, our spotter, TJ Majors, uh, it was a great addition to our, our race team as far as uh, speedway uh, racing. He's, he's the best as they come, and I think Dale Jr. taught him a lot. So, uh, thanks to Dale uh, for, for retiring so I can get him. <laughs> and uh, it's been a, a great, uh, you know, um, first, it was been 10 races or so this year so far. So, it was, um, you know, we've, we've been consistent. We've been getting better every week. Um, you know, last week we were able to win a couple stages, lead some laps. Today, lead some laps and get some good stage points and then, uh, you know, ultimately have the checkered flag in our hands. So uh, it feels really good to, to pull back into victory lane again. It's been so long. <laughs> it's been way too long. So we're, we're not going to wait that long again. All right. Well, let's have some questions here. We'll start in the middle with Mike and then go to Holly and Bob. Mike Embry, USA Today. With the cars being more or less unstable today. Were you concerned late in the race that you couldn't be able to make the moves you might have to make knowing that? Um, you know, it's the moves you make can't be as aggressive, but it's the same for the guy behind you, right? They, they can't make as much of an aggressive move as we used to either because they're unstable. Um, you know, and that's just, it, it's a product of what we have as far as the right height rule going away. All our race teams are, <laughs> how can we make our cars as fast as we can make them, which takes downforce weight grip away and uh you know you see the cars that are you know they're, they're out of control especially down straight away through the tri -oval, that's probably where it's the worst uh, making big moves especially on the exit of the corner sometimes that gets really bad too so um you know our, our car handled pretty well i feel like i was able to to make some fairly aggressive moves not as aggressive as i'd like sometimes but i was able to make the right moves at the right time um and ultimately you know secure the lead and then after that you know you just got to be on your game i missed a block early in the race uh with the 11 uh, which lost us the lead one time and i thought man that's that might come back and bite me but uh we had the right strategy and good pit stop that uh, got us back in front of him or he he sped i guess that's what got us in front of him again hey joey over here Hey. How are you? Uh, Holly I'm pretty Kane. good. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Holly Kane, <laughs> NASCAR Wire Service. When you are leading like you are in the very final few laps like that, are you feeling very confident I'm in front or, oh, my gosh, I hope they don't get me? What is the, <laughs> what is the you know? You know, I, I don't think neither of those thoughts really go through your mind. It is no, oh, my gosh, I'm winning the race or – you know, or confident that you're going to hold them all off. You just, you're, you're in the moment, right? You're living in that moment that you're just trying to listen to everything. It's like a ultra focus you got to have. Uh, you're trying to listen to your spotter and every little thing that he says. Um, you're, you're staring in the mirror and looking what 
you know, the, the car behind you looks like they're doing and the car behind him is looks like they're trying to do and where they're trying to figure these runs are coming out. And, you know, we really thought the 17 and the nine were is where the runs were going to come from because they kept la lagging back and all that. And those are the blocks that we we're going to have to make to, to um, you know, maintain the lead. That's kind of what we thought was going to happen. And um, yeah, some of that did play out. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, Kevin kind of got shuffled out. Uh, Kurt made the block and then uh, was able to hold his runoff that he got from them. So uh, once we came off turn four, I felt like I had one more block and then uh, we were able to get it to the start finish line. And, and that's what it was. He had one good run through turns three and four, was able to go up and get that block. And then after that, I was pushed out ahead good enough to uh, come across the line. Bob Pockers, ESPN, kind of along those lines and what you were talking about, how the, you had all the Stuart Haas guys behind you. Do you I mean, were, were you just that good today, or do you think it was the, this package that didn't allow them to get together, or is restrictor plate racing just so unpredictable as far as who works with who that it's still kind of a toss-up? Yeah, I think, you know, really um – we, we did a good job, yes, um, but so did a lot of other cars today, and, 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 uh, and many of those Fords. I mean, the Stuart Haas cars were quick, um, and I really thought those are the cars, you know, no matter where uh, they went, if they got to the outside of me, I was hosed. I, I knew that. That would have been the, the end of it uh, for me. I would have gotten passed uh, by pretty much the whole train probably. I lost so much momentum. Um, you know, I knew they were going to work together, as they should. Um, but once they got picked apart, I think that was the, the game changer. You know, I, I think Kevin was happy with uh, riding behind me until the last lap, probably. Um, I felt like, you know, those were when the runs were going to start forming and, and when they were going to come behind him. And I think he was waiting for that right moment for when the run got behind him and he was going to take that push. And uh, once he got shuffled out, then it changed the whole complexion, like I said. So uh, I was fully expecting something like that to happen. I was going to make sure that that run they got wasn't too big and I was going to try to stay backed up to them. Uh, that was kind of my play. Um, so, you know, like I said, I, I wasn't quite a lone ranger out there until the last lap. Uh, you know, before that, I felt like the Fords worked really well together. And, um, and that's the reason why we were able to, you know, have a top three, uh, you know, breakaway there for a little bit that, that we had all those Fords on the bottom. That's, that's a big deal um, for, for everyone. That's a big deal for Ford um, to show the strength that they got, but also the, the teamwork. It's a big deal for us. We, we do a lot of uh, team bonding uh, <laughs> trips and different things and, and, that stuff starts to show uh, here more and more as we grow closer. Matt Weaver, Auto Week. Uh, and talking to Todd earlier, he said that he really didn't allow himself to get caught up in what happened after Richmond last year. I'm curious, what kind of toll did a season like that take on you? And how important was it to be able to come out fast earlier this year and now win the race and just kind of completely distance yourself from it? You know, it's. You know, when you get news like that, um, obviously first you're, you're shocked, you're surprised. Uh, as a driver, you, you don't know what's going on. Uh, you just drive the car and, uh, you know, you're kind of like, oh, that stinks. <laughs> and, uh, you know, your, your initial reaction is, I'm going to go out there next week and show them what's up. And then, you know, we came here, we crashed. We went, uh, the next couple of weeks we, we crashed and we lost all our momentum and just got in a slump. Uh, it, it's, um, it was surprising uh, to be in that. And towards the end of last year, we started building some – speed back some confidence back uh, to where we could run in the top 10 grab a top five every now and again and that was good um but you know to fire off the season being consistent um you know all but one race in the top 10 um scoring way more stage points i think more stage points than we scored all year last year probably i, I don't know that but it feels like it um it might be true um you know and then you know leading laps the last couple of weeks uh that confidence just keeps building back to where we know we can be right and uh you know everyone you know there's a lot to talk about obviously a lot of people uh ask that question millions of times of you know what happened when you guys didn't get back and it's still the same team you know not much has changed it's the same uh you know core group that's uh that's made two amazing fights to almost win a championship and uh we stuck together for that reason uh and and anytime you go through uh times of trial like that that's very challenging for for everyone and if you can get through that together you're stronger um and, and for that reason i feel like my team's never been stronger i feel like we still need to make our cars a little bit faster but uh as a race car driver i think i'll say that forever <laughs> said you're never fast enough but we're getting closer and today we proved that
Christian Coley, uh, frontstretch.com and the Motorsports News Source. Joey, I, I asked Todd, uh, uh, Todd about switching spotters over the offseason. Can you tell us a little bit about switching from Tab to TJ over the offseason and then how important TJ was at the end of the race? Yeah, TJ, um, you know, I, I've talked to him for years and built a relationship with him over the last few years. And, um, you know, he's a, a very loyal person. Uh, <laughs> very loyal because <laughs> we tried really hard, <laughs> uh, but he's very loyal to Dale Jr. and and that's a uh, you know a a great test to his character of of who he is and um, you know made me really want him even more on my race team. Um, and when Junior retired, you know he he gave me his word that uh, you know he gave me first first look at it <laughs> and uh, we weren't going to give him the option to to go somewhere else and I just felt like it was a, a good move. Uh, for us, he's a, um, you know, I think when it comes to speedway racing, I don't think there's someone better than that. Um, you know, he, he is fun over the off season uh, to watch films together. And, you know, for him to teach me things about the draft, uh, you know, and kind of share his notebook with my notebook and teach each other what we're, we're thinking in certain scenarios and what we should do. And, um, and then to see all that come to play, uh, you know, over the speed weeks and, and really obviously it's here today. Uh, to see all that is, is very exciting, um, you know, and, and what the future can bring. Uh, when you look at the <laughs> dominance that Dale Jr. was able to have, I think he taught him a lot, and, uh, you know, we're, we're getting some of that benefit, too. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Can you um, go back to a, a couple laps to go? You talk about wanting to see what Stenhouse and, and Chase were going to do. It seemed like the pieces were in place in your favor, that even with two Stuart Haas cars behind you, you know, Stenhouse and Chase probably aren't going to work as well together, and that's going to create some friction. The, the Stuart Haas cars would have needed maybe a third car to get by you. I mean, was it, I mean, did you almost feel like everything was in place for you unless somebody started working well together, that, that this was in, for you the way, you know, people couldn't make as aggressive moves? It, it, yeah. it seemed, not to take anything away, it seemed like it was, uh, although it got a little bit wild there, a couple of, it, it, I think it was surprising maybe how maybe, maybe tame's not the right word, but just how it played out the last couple laps. Yeah, honestly, once they got too wide, I felt better about it. Uh, the runs don't usually come at you as quickly when cars are too wide. You know, they're going to slow each other down, especially at the end of the race. Everyone's going to be right on each other's door and trying to pull each other back. Uh, so when they started getting too wide back there, I was like, okay, it's, this is all right. You know, it's not the end of the world. It, the runs are going to be slower. Um, but it's also hard to block two of them at the same time, if that's the case, right? If they're both coming at you at the same speed, you, well, you got to pick one or the other. Uh, you know, McCurry's only so wide. I know I can make it pretty wide, but not that wide. Um, but, you know, I, I think, um, yeah, like I said, once I got too wide, I felt like I was in a little, maybe a little better shape, maybe just different um, overall. And um, like I said, you just got this ultra focus that you're just in that zone. Um, and there's so much going on. I mean, that, that feeling when you when you get across the line, man, there ain't nothing like that. I haven't been that excited since, probably since the 500. Uh, <laughs> and it's just, uh, it's been so long, right? And you, and you pull in the victory lane, you see everybody again all so excited and see our little man there. Uh, that was uh, that was so special. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires on that and PRN. It's funny you should bring up the little guy. I, I talked to Brittany before the racing. You know, you were, you're, you're Joey Logano, the great race car driver, but apparently at home you're Joey Logano, the great dad. And <laughs> what was it like to have a little guy in, in, you know, in victory lane? But also, she says you guys got a, a really cool schedule. You're kind of protective during the week. Yeah, I, I tried to take some of the night shifts and, uh, and, and some of the, you know, during the day, uh, take a little bit of time, give, give Mama a break. He's not a real easy baby, um, which means he'll probably be a really good race car driver because he cries a lot. So uh, <laughs> he'll fit right in here. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, <laughs> um, he can do whatever he wants. He didn't have to drive a race car. But it was, uh, you know, to, to me, that's the coolest feeling, you know, it was amazing to pull in the victory lane and, and to celebrate with you guys. But when I turned around and saw, uh, you know, Hudson and, and Brittany over there, uh, and that I may have cried a little bit. That was uh, just a, it, it's just cool. You know, it, it's a different feeling. You know, I've, everyone always says, you, you know, you don't understand until you have kids. And I always kind of shook my head and was like, yeah, yeah okay. Um, and, and now having a little guy and seeing him there, uh, yeah, he may not remember, but you know, for, for me, that was very special. And for Brittany, I hope it was too. And um, something we'll cherish forever. We'll have a, 
a great family picture in uh, in Victory Lane at Talladega. That's that's pretty cool. Not many people have a family picture like that, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Dominic Cotagona with the Racing Experts and ESPN Albuquerque. Back to the stage points thing. So last year you scored 160 stage points altogether. This time around you are the third driver to hit the 100-point mark, 101 stage points. Just get your thoughts on that and, and kind of the turnaround from last year in that category. Yeah, really stage points are direct correlation to speed, right? Um, there's sometimes a car that doesn't uh, maybe have as much speed can squeak out a good finish every now and again. You know, get a top 10, get a top five. Things happen at the end of the race. You can get something. But in the mid part of the race, you know, especially beginning of the race, it's a lot of times where you qualify uh, is a big part of it. Um, for the first stage and the second stage, a lot of times it's just how fast you are and you're able to maintain that speed and, and stay up there and, and, and grab those points. So, um, yeah, it, it, our cars are quicker is what it says. Is what it says. Jim Utter, motorsport.com. Two questions. The first, when Todd was talking about your situation at the end of the race and who was around you, he kept mentioning that you had people around you that you were very comfortable with, that you and Kevin Harvick have actually developed a very good relationship when it comes and tend to find each other in these races. Uh, some people might find that surprising. <laughs> but I wondered, as the race, with no teammates and the race was coming to a close, did you feel comfortable with the people that, you found yourself around towards the end to answer your question i don't think you ever feel comfortable here right <laughs> just no matter who's behind you don't feel comfortable uh your heart rate is digging at least mine maybe it's because i'm a high strung person but my heart rate goes fast as here as it does at bristol um it, it's just so much going on uh but to the point todd said with, with kevin um you know I, I look at him as you know almost a teammate at this point you know uh, we race really well together not only at super speedways but we do seem to find each other a lot here but even on mile and a half short tracks we we seem to to work well together we race hard don't get me wrong but there's times in during the race that that we really uh see the big picture and um it yes surprising probably after the beginning parts of my career but uh you know it shows that you know you're able to move past things you know you don't hold grudges forever you 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 try to figure things out and, um, you know, over the time racing a lot together, I think we both respect each other's uh, talents and, and the things that uh, he's able to do off the racetrack and I'm able to do off the racetrack. And uh, as far as trying to help grow our sport, I think we work a lot together there as well. So um, just th there's, you know, now that he drives a Ford, it makes it even easier uh, for, for us to, to have that relationship. Well, so, um, yeah, it's good to have an ally uh, like, like Kevin out there. And uh, you don't want to have him on your bad side, is what I figured <laughs> out, too. <laughs> second question, what prompted the roof hatch exit? Why not? I got I a roof hatch. You don't have that every week. I did that before here, the first time we won here, and I forgot the second time. And I was like, yeah, I'll come out the roof. Man, we're raising the roof, brother. <laughs> <laughs> KellyCrandallRacer.com. Joey, it kind of seems like you have flown under the radar a little bit coming into today, and you know you were second in points. Uh, you, you mentioned stage points and uh, you know running up front and, and things like that. Um, kind of what's gone into the turnaround, and, and how good do you feel about what you have going on? You know, this early in the season. Yeah, I feel great about um, the consistency, and, and, and especially the last two weeks. In the last two weeks, we've, we've picked it up, you know, Richmond and then here. And obviously, two unique racetracks and a lot of different things that's going on. But um, overall, you know, it, the it just staying consistent, I think, you know, staying a team, staying confident in each other, uh, the, you know, knowing that, that Todd's the guy for the job and, and I'm the guy for, to, for the job and, and our engineers are in the right places and our, our road crew and our pit crew is all in the right places. Um, knowing that uh, and being able to focus on what's ahead uh, and, and, and work together is, is a very big piece. Um, point, when you start pointing fingers at each other, that's when teams start to, you know, implode uh, from the inside out. And, um, you know, I, I think as a race team, we've been able to stick together through this, the tough time. And um, hopefully all that's over and uh, we don't have to wait another year in a race <laughs> to, uh, to get back here. And not that I was counting. <laughs> we have one more question down here in the media center, and then we'll wrap up in the press box. Uh, just a hypothetical question. Had McMurray not gotten airborne on Friday and they had remained with the rules package that was in place, how much different would the racing have been out there today? Honestly, I don't 
think much. Um, you know, you're still going pretty fast in the draft, and uh, you know, I, I obviously go, we'd be going a little bit faster without the plate change, and we were already on edge. I probably would have crashed more, I, I guess, if I had to pick one thing. And, and after a cargo was airborne like that, and we were going so fast, and we, we came here faster than we've been in a long time because the race teams are getting smarter and they keep trying things and making cars faster, right? So you're gonna you're gonna obviously keep going faster. Um, you know, when we come back here in the fall, the cars will be going fast again. Um, as everyone gets better. Uh, so, you know, NASCAR had to do something. You know, as a, from a safety standpoint, you can't have cars going up in the air. That's, that's not good. We got to keep them on the ground. Um, you know, fr from a being inside the car, I like to keep them on the ground. Uh, that's it's important, but I think even from a fan standpoint, it's a, a safety factor to keep cars from going in the catch fences. Nobody's home. All right, Joe. Well, congratulations. Good All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good trip home.